Hello there. Hello, everybody. How lovely to be here and how wonderful to have this technology where we can uh, all share and uh, come together. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's 7.30 in the morning here in Australia, so here we go. Now, um, first I should give a little bit of a praise to you about how the Sabian symbols came about so that we know what we are talking about here, because uh, some of you may not know. Um, the Sabian symbols are a phrase that go with each degree of the zodiac. So there are 360 Sabian symbols, 30 obviously for each sign, and these came about in 1925 in uh, San Diego in Balboa Park and it was Mark Edmund Jones and Elsie Wheeler who did this thing that Mark Edmund Jones called an experiment. Now Mark Edmund Jones was a fabulous astrologer um, and he was an occultist, um, he was a Hollywood screenwriter, he wrote about 40 Hollywood screenplays, um, he was a, uh, a minister of the church, he was an astrologer. So, and, and uh, a philosopher and a writer, author. Um, so a very interesting man. And he wanted to find uh, a phrase to go with each degree of the zodiac. Now I won't go on too long about all of this because we do want to get into some juicy uh, excerpts of what this all means for looking at relationships. But um, so what happened was that Mark Edmund Jones had 363 inch by five inch white cardboard cards and on the back of each card, he had uh, a degree of the zodiac, starting at Aries 1 and going through to Pisces 30. So he would shuffle the cards and put one in front of Elsie Wheeler, and she would see a, um, uh, she would see a, or she would receive a message, uh, and that, that message was a phrase, uh, like uh, uh, a bridge over a deep gorge or a dentist at work or the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, or neighbours coming together in a house raising party. So he would shuffle the cards, put one completely at random in front of her, face down, so neither she nor he knew what was written on the other side of the card, and uh, she would receive a transmission of, of knowledge, it seems. What uh, Mark Evan Jones believed was coming through Elsie Wheeler was the um, a brother from the Sabian Brotherhood from 2000 years ago from Mesopotamia. It was said that she was channeling this brother. Now this all sounded a bit strange to me when I first started looking at it because I wasn't particularly into channeling and, and uh, sometimes when I hear that word, uh, you know, I, half of me turns off. But uh, I've had to sort of accept that this might be a reasonable thing for someone to do because this is what Elsie Willer did you know, on that day that we don't know the date of, in 1925. She had been confined to the Home for the Incurables in St. Louis and she was confined to a wheelchair her entire life from the age of three with rheumatoid arthritis. She was a uh, an orphan and her story is extraordinary and I've done a lot of research into her story. So she had a very cloistered life and it's very interesting that uh, she never married in those days. You know, it was right unusual not to marry or have children. So she had rheumatoid arthritis and was in a wheelchair from the age of three. So this was, you know, obviously uh, in being in the home for the incurable, you know, didn't give her many uh, romantic opportunities, I imagine. So, um, and it's interesting that Elsie Wheeler's Sabian symbol for her son is a bride with her veil snatched away. So, you know, this is the 12th degree of Virgo. So one could look at that degree and say, well, was she married? She must have been married. She was the bride. But, you know, in Elsie's case, I'd say that she manifested that in a more spiritual way, in that her veil was snatched away and she was a um, spiritualist medium and she could see between worlds. And that is basically what Elsie did uh, when she moved to um, San Diego in 1923. She left the home for the incurables uh, where she'd been with a lot of people that were dying. Um, you know, she was in there for 30 years. So this very cloistered life, she was seen to be a clean slate by Mark Edmund Jones. He did know another clairvoyant who could do it, but she was too much of a worldly figure. Zoe Wells, her name was. And so uh, Mark Edmund Jones decided to go with Elsie Wheeler because she was such a clean slate. And uh, so she would see these images that would come from the other side, apparently. Now, it